Thank you so much, sir, for uh, uh, an engaging speech, just like uh, Monica ji. Uh, we have a bunch of questions, but before we begin on the questions, uh, I also have a question being the journalist. He is trying to evade. I must also share a small anecdote. Uh, uh, recently, since I have been always a political and investigative reporter, uh, last week I was spending about a week and a half in Nagpur and other parts of Maharashtra to cover uh, elections. And when I ran into Nitin Gadkari Saab, uh, he said, you know, you have a job of work, you have a job of work, you have a So when Monika ji sat here, I was about to ask Judge Saab, you know, how did you feel your job? So since they were discussing about egos, but I will skip that part and uh, restrict it to UCC since elections are still a few days to go for and I will restrict my profession a uh, little away and also uh, I see, I stumble upon one of the wives of a leading politician uh, of, of Delhi whose uh, coverage I have been extending over the last one or two weeks also sitting here. Uh, <clears throat> sir, my first question if I may. Uh, of course, this is going to be a, a back and forth, but I will I'll start with you, sir. Uh, it is often said that legal pluralism uh, is the guiding force of the legislative, of any legislative policy or framework in India. Legal pluralism, which is why uh, when you talk about Article 25, it, it gives us the ability to understand the freedom to uh, choose a particular faith or religion. I want to understand from you, sir, that how different or easy, difficult or easy it is to use Article 44 over Article 25 and why there is a precedence of 25 over 44. I think uh, the moderator did not was, was had a dose off when I was giving me a presentation. It's affirming my statement. <laughs> uh, see, I refer to John Vallamatam judgment given by the Supreme Court uh, when it struck down uh, Section 118 of the Succession Act. Supreme Court has categorically held in matters relating to, uh, you know, relating to marriage, succession, etc. Uh, Article 25, 26 cannot be invoked. In fact. Uh, uh, therefore, Article 25 cannot claim precedence over uh, Article 44. See, I come from uh, Tamil Nadu, I said, and uh, they had the Tamil Nadu government had recently passed an order uh, regarding appointment of temple priests. I struck down that order, and now the matter is pending before the Supreme Court of India. The argument of the government was we appoint watchmen, we appoint clerks, and like that, we appoint priests also. Appointment of priest is a secular function. That was their argument. If appointment of priest can be a secular function, then I would, uh, you know, humility suggest that marriage succession, they are also secular functions only. So, Article 25 cannot claim precedence over Article 44. Supreme Court has settled this issue. This issue. And uh, sorry, I was just trying to pull your leg. Don't take it seriously. <laughs> Uh, Monika ji, you, you talked about the history dating to the 19th century and, and brought us back to several cases of the last 30 years. I want to understand from you uh, that when you talk about UCC, sir also talked about minorities within minorities, citing example of Kanyakumari. Uh, is UCC contentious debate today only restricted to Muslims when it comes to presenting uh, the drafting the bill such as in Uttarakhand now? Uh, and when you talk about Goa, uh, since we inherited Portuguese law there, why is it that only a certain section of the society, only Muslims are offended to this? Is it that the offense is being taken by the Muslims or is it also about the other communities that we also need to talk about in UCC? Thank you so much for asking me on Uttarakhand because uh, I, by chance, I just forgot to mention Uttarakhand Act. If Uttarakhand Act you want to understand in about three minutes, I have three minutes, I just go through it. 
the relevant provisions. There are, okay. So, Uthra, you have your pen and paper with you? Mobile phone, chale. Uttarakhand uh, Act, if you want to understand in just three minutes, I'll give you the main provisions. I've gone through the Act several times. I was always apprehensive the Act aayega kaisa? Ek ke liye aayega, sab ke liye aayega, kaisa Act aayega? And I myself, I like that. Pehla to, it has been uh, the committee which drafted the Act was headed by Ranjana Desai ji, one of my favorite judges. So, he basically gets for Lagnan Thariya. Or uh, Uniform Civil Code of Uttarakhand 2024 Act, we have about four parts. First part is marriage and divorce. Second part is succession. Third part is living relationship. Or fourth part is miscellaneous. So basically three parts. Marriage, divorce, succession and living relationship. It has 392 sections. It is for about 170 pages. Now, this is a law to govern and regulate the laws regarding marriage, divorce, succession, and living relationships. This is subse important section 4. Telibat, it doesn't talk about Hindus or Muslims or Christians. It is applicable to all. If you are, okay, take yourself as a person who lives in Uttarakhand and your parents are living in Uttarakhand and you have come to government law college, Mumbai, to read, to study here. So this law is applicable to your parents also who are residing in the territory of Uttarakhand and they are applicable, this law is applicable to you also because you are Uttarakhandi. It is applicable to both who live in Uttarakhand and who go elsewhere to work. Dono pe applicable. Up. You are a boy or a girl. Okay. Now, if you want to get married, how will you get married? Marriage. Section 4 says marriage is solemnized between man and a woman. Clear? <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> so, marriage is sort of nice between, you know, act says, it says marriage between a man and a woman. If the following conditions are fulfilled, very, very important section. First condition, they don't have a spouse living. So, by them is finished. Section 4 says they don't have a spouse living. By any khatam, unnaido tabi shadi. Second is, neither party is incapable of giving consent due to unsound, unsound mind. Unsound mind nahi hai, khoshu hawas mein. Third is, man is 21 years, woman is 18 years, child marriage goes away. For Hindus and Muslims, child marriage goes away. Uske baad, it is not within the prohibited degrees of relationships. Yani Hindus mein pehle tha hai. कि आप कजन से शादी नहीं कर सकते मुस्लिम से भी है कजन से शादी नहीं कर सकते इट गिव्स फोर थिंग्स सेक्शन 4 पहला सेकंड मैरिज नॉट अलाउड बाय देम इज फिनिश्ड चाइल्ड मैरिज नॉट अलाउड कजन मैरिज नॉट अलाउड यू हैव टू बी ऑफ साउंड माइंड सेक्शन 6 सेज कंपलसरी रजिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ मैरिज मैरिज हैज टू बी रजिस्टर्ड नहीं रजिस्टर करोगे तो फाइन भरना पड़ेगा। डिवोर्स हैज तू बी रजिस्टर्ड नहीं रजिस्टर करोगे तो फाइन भरना पड़ेगा। इफ यू आर अ बॉय हु वांट्स तू मैरी आपको आपकी वाइफ लड़का और लड़की दोनों की शादी होगी देन यू हैव तू अप्लाई तू द रजिस्ट्रार ऑफ मैरिज विद इन थर्टी डेज हमारी � Registrar will check, he will do a preliminary investigation. Shari Shura Larka to nahi, Thai Larki to nahi. They are about 21 years and 18 years. Tisra, already, haan bata na, already married to nahi hai. Aise kake he will verify everything. He may take police help. Agar minor hai, he may inform your parents. And you can't conceal your identity while marrying. Aap raaj ho to simran se raaj bante hi shari kar sakte. Okay.
तो ये इन्वेस्टिगेशन होगी उसके बाद रजिस्ट्रार इफ ही डज नॉट रजिस्टर योर मैरिज इन 15 डेज इट विल बी डीम्ड रजिस्ट्रेशन मान लिया जाएगा रजिस्ट्रेशन हो गई है सब कुछ ऑनलाइन प्रोसेस है इफ रजिस्ट्रार फेल्स टू रजिस्टर योर मैरिज ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड रुपीज फाइन रजिस्ट्रार के ऊपर लगेगा यहां वहां हुआ उसके बाद डावोर्स डावोर्स में डावोर्स के प्रिस्क्राइब्ड ग्राउंड हैं उनके अलावा डावोर्स नहीं होगा इंस्टेंट ट्रिपल तलाक गॉन तलाक 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 एक एक महीने पे गॉन एक बार में तीन बार तलाक कह के तीन महीने वेट करके गॉन किसी और तरीके से तलाक नहीं हो सकता डावोर्स किन ग्राउंड पे होगा अगर यू हैव वॉल्ट्री सेक्शुअल इंटरकोर्स विद सम अनादर पर्सन क्रोल्टी डिजर्शन कन्वर्टेड टू अदर रिलीजन अनसाउंडनेस ऑफ माइंड सेवन ईयर से नो क्लू कहां पर आप हो या कॉन्टोवीन सेक्शन फोर ग्राउंड है डावोर्स कैन बी ओनली ऑन ग्राउंड प्रिस्क्राइब उसके बाद एक और ग्राउंड है इफ हजबेंड हैज मोर देन वन वाइफ एट द टाइम ऑफ मैरिज उस कारण से भी आप डिवोर्स ले सकते हैं उसके बाद इसमें है कोई पंडित कोई मौलवी अगर एक शादीशुदा पर्सन है उसकी दूसरी शादी कराएगा उसको जेल हो जाएगा वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नो बडी कैन एम्बेक्ट इंड्यूस और हेल्प आ माइनर टू गेट मैरिज अ मैरिड पर्सन टू गेट मैरिड नहीं हो सकता सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट प्रोविजन मेंटेनेंस टू ऑल वाइफ्स अगर आप 2024 से पहले भी आपकी शादी हुई है और एक से ज्यादा शादी हुई है मेंटेनेंस कैन बी गिवन टू ऑल द वाइफ्स टेकिंग इन टू कंसिडरेशन हाउ मच द मैन इज अर्निंग एंड हाउ मच द वुमेन इज ऑन द स्पीट नीड्स दो प्रोविजन और बताऊंगी कस्टडी ऑफ चिल्ड्रन मैन एंड वुमेन हैव इक्वल कस्टडी ऑफ चिल्ड्रन सक्सेशन सक्सेशन में इरिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ रिलीजन रिलीजन की बात नहीं करता ये ये कहता है कि इफ द पेरेंट्स डू नॉट लीव अ विल इंटरस्टेट सक्सेशन देन बॉय एंड गर्ल बोथ आर इंटाइटल टू इक्वल शेयर इन द प्रॉपर्टी अब मैं आपकी प्रोविजन पे आती हूँ सेक्शन थी मैं आपके इसलिए कहूँ इतने क्वेश्चन इसके आते हैं ना लिव इन रिलेशनशिप पार्ट थ्री ध्यान से सुन लेना ग्यारह सेक्शन लिखना हो तो लिखना पहला है सेक्शन 378 से सेक्शन 389 तक 11 सेक्शंस हैं लेवन रिलेशनशिप मोस्ट डिस्कस मोस्ट डिवोटेड मोस्ट कंट्रोवर्शियल सबसे आप क्वेश्चंस पे आते हैं कॉल दिस वन एक ही मैं खत्म करती हूं आई एम सॉरी ये ना रह जाता नहीं तुम्हें 378 सेक्शन कहता है लिविन पार्टनर्स सपोज एक लड़का है और एक लड़की है वो साथ रहना चाहते हैं बिना शादी के उनमें से कोई माइनर नहीं हो सकता और भी कोई शादीशुदा नहीं हो सकता कोई अपनी आइडेंटिटी कंसील करके साथ में नहीं रह सकता आपको अप्लाई करना पड़ेगा रजिस्ट्रार को स्टेटमेंट ऑफ लिविंग रिलेशनशिप देना होगा रजिस्ट्रार वेरीफाई करेगा पुलिस से और बाकी जगह से शादीशुदा तो कोई नहीं है माइनर तो कोई नहीं है झूठ बोल के तो कोई नहीं करा फ्रॉड या फोर्स तो कोई नहीं करा तभी वो उसको कंसेंट देगा रजिस्टर करेगा सर्टिफिकेट देगा यू कैन की सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ लिविंग रिलेशनशिप नहीं करोगे तो इसमें फाइन होगा जेल भी हो सकती है उसके बाद अगर आप लोग टर्मिनेट करते हो लिव इन रिलेशनशिप तो एक व्यक्ति टर्मिनेट करके डिजर्ट करके भाग नहीं सकता रजिस्ट्रार को इन्फॉर्म करना होगा आई एम टर्मिनेटिंग लिव इन रिलेशनशिप रजिस्ट्रार आपके पार्टनर को भी बताएगा कि हैज टर्मिनेटेड और अगर लड़की को छोड़कर भागोगे डिजर्ट करोगे लिव इन रिलेशनशिप में द गर्ल हैज राइट टू मेंटेन दुनिया में और कहीं नहीं है शायद लिव इन रिलेशनशिप में द गर्ल हैज राइट टू मेंटेनेंस तो ये मोटी मोटी मैंने आपको बातें बताई हैं ये उत्तराखंड पे ही लागू होता है और कहीं लागू नहीं मोनिका जी थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच वी हैव वन क्वेश्चन फॉर यू इन दिस वन वीक थ्री सेवेंटी नाइन फोर आल्सो सेज दैट द बर्थ ऑफ द चाइल्ड बोर्न आउट ऑफ बोर्न आउट ऑफ लेट मी कमी बोर्न आउट ऑफ दिस this living relationship would be considered as a legitimate test yes. you have not addressed that concern mm-hmm. and that is also a very valid concern of many such anxious parents and couples as well aur jahan tak aap raat samran ki baat kar rahi hain main aapse ye sawal puchna chahta hu ki raat samran ke beech mein agar kuljit aake RTI file kar de aur puche ki yahan ek district mein kitne raat samran rehte hain to police ko to ye bhi inform karna padega ki kitne sare yahan pe raat samran kul and that kuljit 
if he is a fern lover he will get to know about where the rajasindans are living so i want to understand from you how would you tolerate such sort of interference and what would be the way out or a solution that ucc provide to such concerns yes that's why i said part 3 is the most controversial about living relationships because it's my privacy it's my choice who is state to interfere now state says we have data and data says because of fraud and because of concealment of identity etc so many girls have been ruined their life has been ruined so we are just putting certain checks now state is saying everything is online now the question comes how much the state can regulate how much the state should regulate how much they should peep in the bedrooms of people this question is there nahi lekin state, kya state uske us bachche ko legitimate manega nahi se ha batati hu 379 clearly says children of living partners will be legitimate dekho bachcha hamesha legitimate hota hai chahe wo first marriage se ho ya second marriage se ho ya third marriage se ho ya living mein ho bachcha hamesha legitimate hota hai ye jo husband aur wife ka sambandh hai ye ho sakta hai legal ho ya valid na ho bachcha hamesha legitimate hai aur ye clearly yahan par kaha gaya hai mujhe lagta hai ki this can be a an effort to over regulate हो सकता है ये आगे कोर्ट में जाएगा जो वहां पर केसेस आएंगे कहीं ना कहीं ये डाइल्यूट होगा बट दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट अ गर्ल शुड नो द पर्सन आई एम लिविंग विद इज नॉट कंसीलिंग द आइडेंटिटी इज नॉट मैरिड ऑलरेडी एंड द गर्ल शुड नॉट बी मैरिड दैट इज व्हाट आई थिंक थैंक यू थैंक यू व्हेन मोनिका मैन वाज रेफरिंग टू Uttarakhand uh, statutory provision, man and the woman. When she read that slowly, there was a giggle among the audience. Friends, uh, I have a different take on this. See, I consider myself. See, when I was referring to Shikhand, you know, Shikhand was a great warrior. I meant no disrespect to him, and I consider myself a champion of the rights of transgender persons. I, as an advocate, I filed a repetition in 2002 and got an order for issuance of voter ID cards for them. And in two thousand and in two thousand nineteen, in two thousand nineteen, a case came before me. Arun Kumar. So Arun Kumar and Strija, they got married in a temple. Strija was a, a, a trans woman. The registrar said, uh, the Oxford, they want to get their marriage registered under the Hindu Marriage Act. The registrar said, Section five talks about a bride and a bridegroom. Bride is defined in the Oxford uh, dictionary. As a woman on her wedding day, Srija, you are not a woman. Therefore, uh, no, the, your marriage will not be registered. After appeal, also they dismissed. Then they filed a writ petition. Writ petition came before me. After referring to the several aspects, I held the expression "woman" occurring in the Hindu Marriage Act, Section Five, will include a trans woman also. That was my judgment. And the judgment was upheld in the same sex the judgment as recently also. So therefore, my request will be: we should, let us not look for picking the best from every religion, making a sort of a salad out of it. No, the uniform civil code, in my view, should be utterly secular, and it should take into account every aspect, including the rights of the trans persons also. Thank you. we may bring uh, some of the questions uh, prominent questions from uh, the esteemed audience here uh, a student omkar mahajan has just asked what uh, he was about to he, he mentioned uh, if ucc ma'am is to be framed and implemented in this year or whenever what should it be based upon will it be based upon hindu schools of thought or completely secularism or european secularism See, basically, when you see uh, and read the uh, Act of Uttarakhand on UCC, it also says that uh, suppose I am a Hindu or a Muslim or a Christian or a Sikh, then we have our own respective ceremonies. It may be nikah, it may be sabpadi, it may be anand karan, it may be holy union, etc., ashirwad, etc. So, in ceremonies, that is. wherever the religious rituals are uh, required that is a religious function but otherwise it is basically a civil function 
it is between the people it is a civic function marriage divorce succession etc which the state should regulate now if you read this ucc properly you will see no mention of religions here at all so i will not say it's based on um, hindu law or a muslim law or a christian law it is basically a law which is applicable to everybody irrespective of religion it does not talk about any contentious issue it says that how will the marriage take place it should fulfill these conditions it may be a hindu it may be a muslim anything how will divorce take place it should fulfill these conditions how will a living happen it should fulfill these conditions so everything is prescribed not even mentioning the religion i think it is a good act a subject of discussion people will be debating and discussing screen it a few things will be left out a few things will be added whatever will come i think it will be a good progress and the next stage towards success next question is by heed she asks how will ucc ensure that tradition and customs under various religions and of various religions are also preserved and not disregarded due to ucc implementation which is a valid question is there a concern ma'am today that the fact that if you read this uttarakhand act it's good just go through it and you will see that all your concerns are meted out here because it clearly says ki theek hai you have nikah or you have sapadi around the holy fire see your wish na but thereafter the relation between husband and wife how will they marriage how will they get divorced how 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 will the property go to their children all these are civil functions in a civilized society this comes out of the realm of uh, religion religion is what it is how i talk to my god that is religion how do I, how do i talk to you it is not religious it is social it is secular the next question the next question is by isha dhumale the missing link of ucc and the defects of already implemented ucc of goa which is in place in uttarakhand is the issue of domestic violence and live in relation do you think that there is a scope of uh, ucc implementation with domestic violence to be kept in 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 this paradigm as well how do we look at domestic violence concerns uh, under the ucc domestic prevention of women from domestic violence act you have a separate act and which is applicable to all so ucc only takes care of again i see that corner table as sir said yeah so this entire if you see everything uniform civil law is there uniform criminal law is there you ucc is that coding of family law marriage succession divorce adoption maintenance that is all it only takes care of these five things vasundra soni asks many people in the opposition think it's a threat to political cultural sensitivity and that there is a political motive which i also want to ask is this actually a political move or is this a requirement of a civil society irrespective of any politics behind it we are ambedkar ji the the legend of the indian polity and the constitution he said in those times of 1950s bring bring one nation one law now he said unify the entire citizenry remove all discrimination towards women and children it is in one line if i define ucc according to me it is removal of all discrimination against women and children that is ucc now culture is much more culture enriches discrimination demolishes your confidence and your right to live with dignity so culture is something separate and some people think that in today's time i gave you that example now that lazy lady is an air hostess who is maintaining her husband and she says i am an air hostess i can go in the air i can be a pilot tomorrow i can go in the air but in the domestic front i have to live with three more wives and i have i have no reprisal i have no way how to get out of it why if i was not wearing this bindi how how is the court concerned who am i if i am a woman 
and I am a victim. I need justice, irrespective of my religion. Sir, one of the questions is regarding the fact that someone is playing a devil's advocate that if UCC implementation causes a social unrest, why cannot we make appropriate changes just alone in the personal laws? In the constitution, see this, uh, in, the, in Tamil there is one uh, uh, phrase, with one stone uh, you take two mangoes. So I thought with UCC, we hit the two mangoes. One is gender justice, other is national integration. So therefore, I think these are all superior goals and objects and we should strive only towards that. Thank you. I think this is the defining statement that national integration is the whole objective of UCC. Uh, before we wrap up, there's a last question by Vyakya Pandey. In your opinion, Matt and Sir, what steps should be taken by law students and legal professionals to contribute to the implementation of UCC India and how do you force their role? Uh, Monica ma'am and I gave you a list of uh, case laws starting from Narasapa Mudali, then uh, Shabanu, then uh, Joran and Dieng Day, John Valamattam, Sarla Mudgal and uh, the 2015 judgment. But some 10 to 15 judgments are there by the Supreme Court and three from uh, Justice Krishna here. Please go through all these uh, judgments very, very carefully. Then read the Constituent Assembly debates and prepare, uh, you know, each one of you uh, essays running to say three pages, four pages and share it. Spreading awareness on the subject is most important. And uh, uh, the, all the misgivings, you know, the needless suspicions, they must be addressed. That's more important. Thank you. Telling Ramanji in the cab also, I said, readers are leaders. We have stopped reading. Readers are leaders. Keep on reading. Keep on reading whatever you get. And as Sir is saying, Constitution Assembly debates, read your Constitution again and again. Believe me, every time you read the provisions of your Constitution, you get something new, something new from there. Keep on reading. Then keep on writing. As Sir said, write essays, write articles, share it on social media, share positivity. And do not get uh, cowed down by whatever articles are coming. Whatever you feel is right and you feel is, a, is your contribution for national integration, keep on writing. So read maximum thereafter, write and speak less. <laughs> read more, write more, speak less. Then when you will speak, you'll have that substance in your speech. Thank you. And I, I'll just add one line to this before we wrap up that, as ma'am said that, and sir also said you read and write. As a journalist, we also encourage the civil society to tell things that either you write things which are worth remembering or you do things which are worth writing. That's what, that's what we have learned. Uh, with this, we wrap up the session and we thank our esteemed guests and all of you uh, for participating in UCC debate and hope there will be more encouraging signs uh, in future as well to engage all of you, the stakeholders, to lead to uh, a prominent law which can be part of our lives and also bring a societal change. Thank you so much for being part of this.